Thank you. Thank you. General President Hoffa, General Secretary Treasurer Hall, to all the delegate alternates and all the guests, good morning. It's an honor to speak in front of you today, especially with some very, very special guests that we have here to speak to you today. I'm the Principal Officer of Local 396 in Los Angeles, and as our General President said, I'm the uh, Director for the Solid Waste and Recycling Division. The Teamsters Waste and Recycling Division represents 30,000 hardworking men and women in the private sector sanitation industry. These are drivers, helpers, laborers, and sorters that work for some of the big uh, private corporations like Waste Management, like Republic Services, Advanced Disposal, and a dozen more. In many industries, workers come to the Teamsters because they want higher wages and they want pensions and affordable health care. But in sanitation MRFs or sorting facilities, they come to us because they don't have shade, they don't have water, they don't have clean restrooms or break rooms, and sometimes the companies don't even give them gloves. They come to us because they want to be treated like men, like human beings who deserve dignity and respect. In 1968, sanitation workers in Memphis, Tennessee, rose up in the most historic strike for union recognition. After years of abuse, disrespect, and deadly working conditions, they demanded that the city of Memphis recognize their union, AFSCME Local 1733. But what started as a recognition strike became a movement for freedom decency and equality. In one of the most hostile environments for unions imaginable, workers organized and won by building an unstoppable coalition of labor, religious groups, and community organizations. Martin Luther King Jr. lost his life fighting for sanitation workers. In his last speech he gave before his death, he called upon people of faith to support the Memphis strikers, regardless of cost, saying we either go up together or we go down together. Thanks to the bravery of those strikers and the bravery of those who stood by them, they won their recognition. They improved the working con their working conditions. They showed the world that they were men. Public sector workers and their unions transformed sanitation work into strong middle-class jobs. But unfortunately, many gains won by, their, by our elders are being erased through privatization. Once again, workers are faced with deadly conditions and disrespect. Workplace atrocities are still happening, 50 years after workers in Memphis went on strike and after the death of one of their brothers. In fact, the city of Memphis outsourced a quarter of its garbage collection to waste management, which until recently was non-union and is currently in contract negotiations with the Teamsters. The Waste and Recycling Division was created to support, organize, and empower workers in private sector sanitation yards. Already we can point to incredible victories such as Local 350 in San Francisco, previously led by the division's founder, Brother Bob Morales, and now led by, led by Secretary, thank you. And now led by Brother Larry Doherty, has organized their entire market and raised standards to incredible heights. Local 174, Brother Rick Kicks, challenges Local 350 for some of the best contracts in the country and uses politi his political power and the power of Joint Council 28 to maintain standards and keep sanitation in Seattle Union. Local, one thir excuse me, local 731, led by Brother Terry Hancock, is a powerhouse in Chicago. <laughs> Brother Marty Freitas, 
Principal Officer of Local 70, champions hundreds of sanitation workers throughout the city of Oakland. Our local unions, often with the assistance of our division, including Brothers Chuck Stiles and Brother John Linhoney, have organized dozens of haulers and sorting facilities and continue to work with local unions to expand and grow our division. Victories like these didn't come easy. Traditional organizing through the board often doesn't work. Corporations like Waste Management and Republic Services have millions of dollars to spend to deprive their employees of their rights to form unions, but that hasn't stopped us. We've looked to the past to worker movements like Memphis for inspiration and guidance. In Los Angeles, many commercial waste and recycling workers face deplorable working conditions. We form coalitions and form partnership with, with groups like the NRDC, the Sierra Club, the Co Coalition for Clean Air, the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor, SoCal Coach, and most importantly, Lane, the Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy, and their leaders, Roxanne Tynan and Patty Castellanos, to, to provide workers what they need. We did the impossible. We passed landmark legislation that is transforming the, the commercial hauling in Los Angeles. If you want to pick up trash in Los Angeles, you need to have or sign a labor peace agreement with Local 396. We've already organized hundreds of workers, and the policy hasn't even gone into effect yet. Just a few weeks ago, after an incredible rally led by waste workers with our allies at one of our non-union haulers, the company UPW called us and asked to cancel a planned election at the board and recognized 50 workers into the Teamsters. The Waste Division, in cooperation with Local 813 and Secretary Treasurer Brother Sean Campbell and JC16 led by Vice President George Miranda and the IBT Organizing Department led by Jeff, Brother Jeff Farmer has taken this kind of campaign to New York. We formed a diverse coalition there as well and in partnership with Lane's sister organization in New York, Align, we're walking the halls of City Hall right now, and we expect to win there also. <laughs> Workers across America are coming to us to organize. We can and we do win through the board elections, but it's not always enough. We need to organize entire markets, not just yards. We need to coordinate smart, strategic campaigns, not just win organizing drives. We need to act as one union, not just standalone locals. The brave men of, thank you, the brave men of Memphis who stared down dogs and bayonets led the way for a new generation, and a new generation has answered the call. I'd like to quote Reverend James Lawson, who said, when public officials treat them as though they are not a man, that's racism. I'd like to call up Brother Chuck Stiles, the assistant director to the division, to introduce two very, very, well, three very, very special men. Thank you very much. Good morning, brothers and sisters. How y'all doing this morning? Good. Before I get started here, I do want to have a shout out to Local 350. We lost one of the greatest labor leaders this local or this international union has ever known. That was Bob Morales. And uh, it, it, 
Anybody that ever worked with Bob, uh, uh, he, he was the most dynamic little guy I've ever known in my life, and I loved him, and he, we sorely missed him. But I, I want to get started into where we're headed here. And Ron to, uh, talked briefly there about the organizing victories. We've had organizing victories. It's been a great year, a great last year for the Waste Division. Uh, we've got things up and running. It's, we're from Pennsylvania. I think, Ron, we've been everywhere, right? Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, into, I know Chris is here, into Oregon. We, we've done a little bit of everything across the country this year, so it's been great for us. But I really want to hit on, you know, you sit here, and you, I'm a student of history. I love history. And you hear about heroes of the past, and it seems that the, the, like hero is thrown around way too easy now, right? You, you hit a home run, you're a hero. You know, you win the Academy Award, you're a hero. But I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. These two men here, and I'm going to get shook up. These two men I'm going to introduce to in a minute are my heroes. They are unbelievable. I'm, I'm a product of the South. I've lived my whole life in the South. I know what these men had to go through. What Ron said, you know, there's, like I say, there's a bunch of folks on here, go on Facebook, they'll show y'all how to be union leaders, right? But they ain't got the guts to do what these men done. I just want to hit on something here real quick. These guys here, 1968 strikers, and I want everybody in here, if you get a chance, speak to these men. They are a wealth of knowledge. And they have hearts, as, hearts bigger than their big frames, and they're two big frame men. But they have, it's unbelievable. I, I, thanks to them. I will. They deserve it. They deserve it. They're, they deserve it. It, it's, 68 was just a starting point for these men. I've got to tell something on my, on my good friend Alvin Turner. We were, we were organized advanced disposal in Mississippi. Anybody from Mississippi, WC ain't jumping on your state there, but uh, you know, they can, you got some rough old boys down there, you know, so. But we were, we were organized advanced disposal there. We had a meeting over at local 667 in Memphis. Mr. Turner had told me, I'll be there for those guys. It's the last meeting leading up to the vote. I'll be there for those guys. My good friend was hurting so bad with the shingles that day, I don't see how the man walked into the union hall. But he made a commitment to those guys, and he would be there, and he made a commitment to me, and he was there. He was there. Two weeks, two weeks on a strike at Republic Services. These guys didn't have a dog in that fight. But they were there for two weeks, every day for those workers, on the picket line with them, encouraged them, tell them to hang strong, do what had to be done. We just won, and, and Ron Collins will be speaking in a minute from Waste Management in Memphis. Don't let the gray hair on Baxter Leach fool you, because he was the first one who made the march on the boss with a bunch of community allies. He took them. You ain't stopping neither one of these men. They've been involved in a fight for 15, don't matter what it, wherever they're called, they go. Atlanta, y'all saw them on the video when they were speaking in Atlanta. We came in and, and Randy Brown, President 728, will tell you we were taking on, we don't have the right to organize municipal employees. So we're looking for a way around it, right? These guys came, did the march. They were co-chairman co uh, co uh, co, uh, that, that day for our, our annual Dr. King celebration. They were there, they spoke. So these waste workers, you saw them on the video up there lined up. 450 waste workers, the county was so embarrassed after these guys got through with them, they recognized the union over there. So, so again, they just never, these guys never ever stop. It, I asked, I asked Ms. Turner one time, when I'm in Memphis, I make sure I call these guys up. And I asked Ms. Turner one time, you know, brilliant, just, I said, Ms. Turner, what were you doing during the 68 strike? What was your role? And it goes back to what Jim Cabell said up here on the first day, I think. She goes, Chuck, I was registering voters. 
because I knew whatever we went on the picket line, they could take away at the ballot box. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable. I just want to, I'll finish up here real quick, but I, I do want to take, the reason these guys fight so hard, I'll be quite honest with you, is because they see what a union has done for them. All right? And we, you've got to meet their families if, you, if it's ever possible. They have CEOs in their families, professors in their families, teachers in their families, business owners in their families. They know what the power of union did, how it lifted them, okay? How it lifted their lives, how it lifted their lifestyle up, how they were able to do this for their children. And they'll speak on it, they'll speak on it in a bit. But with that, you know, we look, we all know history repeats itself, if we, right? We all know that, right? If we, if we get lazy, we get, you know, don't, we just take everything for granted, it repeats itself. And Ron, Ron Herrera kind of spoke on it, about how more privatization is going on, more privatization. And it has started a, a race to the bottom in, in this industry. So we're seeing ourselves back in Memphis, almost fighting for what we did, not as, nowhere near as bad as in 68. And there was another young hero of mine then stepped up to play at Waste Management in, in uh, Memphis, and that's Ron Collins. And he went through the battle. He's, on our, he's one of our negotiators on the negotiating committee. But I just want to tell everybody here, I, I deeply, deeply love these two men up here. And I, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and they know it. I deeply love them. Well, that said, I want to introduce you to two of my heroes and even a third hero of Iran, okay? Brothers and sisters, please give it up for my good friend, Baxter Leach. Come on, Baxter. I said, good morning. He said, we got about five minutes to speak. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to let y'all know, I'm not an educated man. I'm from, I'm from Mississippi. Anybody know from Mississippi, around Greenwood? I'm just, I came to Memphis here. Memphis, to try to do something for my family. I work, pick cotton, try to help my family. Then I went to the city. And I worked there for 43 years. It wasn't easy. All we got for the union, we went there for working condition. Somewhere we can go wash our hands, take a shower, and everything. Because we went through hard stuff, storm and rain. And rain, we had to keep on pushing. In 1968, so we go on strike. T. O. Jones told me, I was working at night, told me to tell my men we going out. And the son of me said, we didn't get no contract. I said, what we want to do, try to get a contract. And it hurt me so bad, I cried. Tried to fight something for my family, the other family, too. I told them, we are march. We march. Then we went on to the city. We had to go behind the houses, pull brace. Throw tools on our head and rain and water coming out on us. Hard, it's cold. That's why y'all see me walking like I'm. My knees is bad in that cold weather. I thank the Lord for allowing me to come here and tell y'all he was hard. We stood at a man, not a child. And uh, we had to take tools. Go behind the house, get the garbage, 
go out there to leave me for me and that time. We had trucks, we had like load cotton, pick it up and put it in a tool and throw it in the truck for in the truck. Y'all don't know. We, we worked that out. Then we got the push cart with two wheels on. We had to keep them towed on our back. Then the strike went on then, we had a strike over. We got truck with, with the lift on. We had to tow it on out, tow them on. They had to bring it to the street. And that was a blessing from the strike. Thank God for Chuck for bringing us here. Because we travel in here. Everywhere you send us, wherever we go, we come with it. And uh, we was in New York somewhere. The president sent for us to come there to eat with him. We got a chance to go to the White House to see, meet him. He told us he was proud, y'all. One for him, one for us, he wouldn't have been the president today. And we. I could talk a little longer. Every time I get to talk, I get fooled. See, just bring back memory. When y'all see that film there, police run up like dogs, tear gas, eyes body. I still waiting to step up from stood up to be a man. We kept on running till we got till we got the victory. And I thank you, and I thank y'all for bringing us here. You know, you all make me feel good. <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Gillespie, a few years ago, he came and found us, and he invited us to one of his conventions. Ever since then, you all have showed me nothing but love. And I, I thank you. If ever you need me, I'm available. <laughs> now, now, let me get back to where. I just want to tell you all that. Let me get back to where, what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, you all heard of the 1968 strike, but it didn't start there. It started in 1960 when we, when they first went on strike being led by a garbage man by the name of T.O. Jones. Out of, it was 1,300 people working for the city at that time. And out of the 1,300, 
only 33 went on strike. After these people was off about a week or two, the city figured that they had been punished enough. He told them that they'd get a job back. But they had to sign an affidavit stating that they would not participate in another strike. T.O. Jones was the leader, and he told them, says, I'm not going to sign that. Says, as long as you all treat men as if they was animals, says, I'm going to be out here trying to help them. This was night. This was in 1960. It took Tio eight years to organize those, those people, to get them worked up where they would, would go out on strike. Tio worked with them, and he worked. And you know, he didn't give up. He, it took him two years to get me. I had a wife, I had a wife and three little girls who I loved dearly. And I said, I was not going to jeopardize. It wasn't making that much, but at least I had something coming in. And I was not going to jeopardize that, taking a chance on coach. The main thing was for me to make sure my kids was educated. And I was not going to fool around with T.O. Uh, and take a chance on my kids not getting an education. So he, t he told me one day, he says, uh, he says, I need you. Says, uh, uh, Mr. Turner said, look, said, with your help, says, I can organize these people. I said, uh, okay. I said, what are your plan? He said, what I'm going to do, said, when we go out this time, Ain't no 33 going out no more. The whole thing going to shut down. And and he took another four years for us to get with these people and, and talk to them. And finally, one day, two, two men would climb up in the back of a packer, getting out of, the, out of the rain, and the thing short circuit and crushed them. Then the city gave these people, I guess it was maybe seven, eight hundred, 
and they were through with him. So when we get, got through showing the people that this can be you, you don't have to get it climb up in a packer. You can use hand and everything. You're putting it on your head and you carrying it. Says, no telling what this can be. About two weeks after then, everybody figured that they had enough. They figured that they want to stand up and be a man. And we... <laughs> we went on, went on strike. 1,300 sanitation workers walked off. And, and, and after he went and walked off, after about two weeks, the master's all, here one of you five. Well, I know he wasn't going to hire me back. I know my job was, was gone. Yeah, I got to show enough win this, win this thing. Because if I don't, I got to look for something else. And anyway, I, I was sitting in the office and I talked to, was talking to T.O. And he said, I said, man, I said, I don't think we could go. He said, listen, he says, don't give up. He said, what if I had to give up? You wouldn't be where you is today. Now you got 1,300 brothers behind you. Don't give up. And this is what I want to tell you all today. Days might seem dark as night, but hold on, don't give up. You, you, you got, it's, it's a brighter day coming. It's a brighter day coming. And after a while, I'm gonna try to cut this short. <laughs> After, after a while, uh, 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 after Dr. King had came, and he said that he was, I'm gonna be with you until you, you win it. And I felt good. And a few days after that, then they, they killed him. And that was a hard, I, that hurt me again. It really did something to me. So he said, uh, uh, don't worry, we're gonna, get, gonna win it. And sure enough, uh, that we had all the black ministers in Memphis and the white ministers, John, hand together. And, they, they, they,
they, they went to the mayor and he, the mayor, he, he was going to do what them white minister told him. And he said, all right. He said, we'll st start back go shape. And he, he did. A few days after that, the strike was over. One thing that was, that was in the strike, you couldn't discriminate against nobody no more. You had, you had jobs. The jobs that was, was, had been closed to me, I got one of them. And, and I, I educated my kids. You don't have to walk behind the house with can a garbage can. You don't have to do that. You can make this decision. My oldest daughter, she's here somewhere. She, she's got good education. She's working at um, the VA hospital with a, a good high position. And um, my middle daughter, she's in Atlanta. She got uh, a high position. My baby daughter, she's in Knoxville. She's at uh, Tennessee State. She's got a high position. So I, I believe by T.O. not giving up, by him not giving up, by him encouraging me not to give up, I accomplished that. Thank you all. I love you.
Do y'all understand now why I said these men are my heroes? Unbelievable, unbelievable. I got another up and coming hero, as a matter of fact, and I'm a, he went through a, a brutal, anybody, how many of y'all have waste management and you locals have run a campaign? Yeah, and you know how brutal those bastards can be. They don't care, and this kid took it all. My good friend, Ron Collins. Ron, come on up, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. My name is Ron Collins. I'm employed at a Waste Management in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to make this real quick. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say, man, I've been around a lot of crowds. None like this. <laughs> <laughs> But the workers, the workers in Memphis, Tennessee was uh, unionized almost a decade ago. And uh, waste management came in with their typical lies and promises. And as a result, uh, a large percentage of the guys decided to side with the company. Worst mistake they could ever made. It wasn't me, trust me. Um, so, waste management ended up decertifying as a result. The company promised a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that they promised was higher wages, of course, better benefits. Uh, if you get the union out of the way, they said, uh, then you will be able to, we, we will be able to, uh, you know, make a lot more money, and so on, and so on, and so on. So they rolled out this incentive plan. Looked like something they got out of a Cracker Jacks box. Let me explain it to you right quick. The way that incentive plan works is you calculate the number of hours worked and divide that by the miles that you worked that day. Then you add 54.986. Then you multiply that times 1.262. <laughs> I like, you know, are we applying for a job at NASA? <laughs> Man, what is this? <laughs> so, <laughs> or do we have to go back to school and take up trigonometry? <laughs> what do we have to do? So it was ridiculous. But needless to say, once we decertified, what happened was this gave the managers the power to pretty much do what they wanted to do. So when waste management trucks broke down, guess what? They said, well, it's a part of your route, and since you can't get your route up in an efficient amount of time, you lose 15% of your hourly pay for that particular day. So, and most of the times you don't get to make that up. So, I'm happy to say that um, myself and a coworker, we reached out to Teamsters to try to reunionize. And as of November of last year, we uh, voted the union back in. And since the union has been voted in, of course the company is still coming with their tricks and their tactics. Um, one of the things, we had a safety meeting one morning, and the district manager said that he has an open door policy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what it amounts to pretty much. Uh, you can come in and talk to me about anything you want to talk to me about. And he also said that since we had drivers who had just come on board, they hadn't been there 90 days, so uh, 
he couldn't touch their pay because the union was voted in. This came out of his mouth. So for some unexplained reason other than greed, a few weeks ago, they put those guys on that same plan that I just described to you so they could uh, rip them off and, uh, and take, take money from them. So um, we're going through the negotiation process now. And you know we're glad to be a part of the uh, Teamsters once again, 667. We appreciate all their hard work. And <laughs> but I'm confident that we're going to get a good contract in place because we need it. Uh, the biggest problem that we have today with these uh, waste companies is greed. Uh, what these gentlemen went through was unspeakable. Of course, conditions are not that bad, thanks to them. Uh, but we still have our own battles to deal with. So. so, just like to say thank you to uh, Local 667. Thank all of you all. It's been a great crowd. <laughs> uh, but we we want to win this, and we think that uh, with the uh, you all support, uh, we'll get the dignity and respect in a good contract that we, that we deserve. Thank you.